Okay, okay, peace, 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 peace. Oh, let me, I want to turn up, bump up the, oh, I can't even bump up the jams. All right, yeah, welcome back, man. Secret House Against the World, Tokyo Bass, hip hop album discussions. I think we're moving away from the word review. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of times we we discuss aesthetic qualities of things and and not so much like track by track. This song makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. This song got a good beat. We like that too, but it's it's a little different though. You're you're here for the conversation, guys. You're not here for the review. Yeah, I mean, like, find that on everybody that's, that's happy about it. But, yeah, today we're reviewing um, Akai Solo. The, the the album title is called Spirit Roaming. 15 songs, 42 minutes. Comes out on Backwoods Studios, you know, home of Billy Woods, um, Def C, Elucid, and all those really dope underground hip-hop cats. You can see our names here down at the bottom. Um, yeah, Tokyo, you know what I mean? Grip, grip. Uh, yeah, so the way I like to do it when we come into an artist that we haven't reviewed before, I like to check the temperature and see how we know this artist and, and you know what I mean, talk about some of the qualities of an MC and, and how we feel about it before we get into the album. Now, those of you who have been listening to Secret House for over a year, my top 10 last year had um, the, the Navy Blue Akai solo album on it. It was... Um, maybe ninth place on my list. I really am a big fan of Akai Solo. I like I like the cat. I don't really know too much about him though. I know I know he's a New York type of cat, East Coast type of cat, but I don't know his age. I don't really know if he likes, you know what I mean? What? Grits or, you know what I mean, oatmeal. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not a person that does a lot of, like, listen to Research. a lot of interviews. If I do listen to interviews, it's going to be, like, on the Homies podcast Same or, here. like, like Open Mike Eagles podcast or um, the Dad Bod Rap Pod, which are both really dope places to find out about the culture. So, yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan. Big, big, big fan. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a casual fan, I guess. Um I think I got into a Kai solo on Black Sand. Okay. Uh, which was maybe three years ago. Um, he also has like a, he has a tape with Best Friend. Okay, yeah. Uh, but that's uh, like Hajime. Like Hajime. Yeah, that one's uh, dope. And I, I, I mostly, I'm familiar with him predominantly through features on other people's Okay, stuff. yeah. You know, he's obviously very, very like embedded in that, you know, quote unquote post boom bap, like, you know, very like the kind of music he makes, drumless, uh, very lyrically complex music. Uh, obviously, he's featured on three or four of the albums we've reviewed in the past. Yeah. He's on both of the Billy Woods joints. Mm-hmm. Um, was he on I Told Bessie? I'm not sure, but Ooh. he was on The More Mother. He was on The More Mother, he's yeah. On he's on Mother. Jazz Codes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's, you know, he's very present in, in the kind of secret house pantheon, yeah. but this is the first time we've actually reviewed he, one of his records. He's definitely of that kind of abstract New York lineage, you know what I mean? Like, even the title on this song is called Iron Galaxy. That's like straight cannibal lock. So, yeah, he's from that trajectory, from that lineage, that tradition. What about you, Spade? As I've been stepping into more underground music and trying to like, expand my portfolio in this set, I have ran across this guy multiple times, like listening to Wiki, Navy Blue, and stuff like that. I've heard him, and I've come to be acquainted with his music, but I've never listened to a full project. So this is my first time listening to a full project. So I'm kind of like a drive-by listener. I wouldn't even call myself a fan. But like I said, I'm aware of the guy, and yo, I guess we can get into you, this discussion. You, you really like that track off the More Mother with I him did. rapping, though. Mm-hmm. And that was one that I I didn't really love. And, and to be fair, well, to be honest, like, as big of a fan as I am of Akai Solo, a lot of his work is kind of hit or miss for me. Sometimes I really, really love a track, and other times I'm just like, ah, uh, you know, I, I could, I could, like, I don't really care for say it. Say that again for the yeah. people. I, in the back. I would yeah. say that I'm generally a fan of him on a, as a feature artist as well. Like when he was on the More Mother, you know, the More Mother is is very abstract. It deals with like a lot of sort of Afrocentric, Afrofuturist themes, and and musically that comes across as very jazzy. It's very strange, and Akai Solo comes along and just grounds the whole thing you know because he just goes in on his verse like he just rap raps um and i i like that he always brings that groundedness because although he's very similar to to a billy woods and elucid in a lot of ways (laughs) i think he is like a little more traditional he tends to like bar out a little bit more rather than going for you know sort of more spoken word like yeah. offbeat delivery where you know where a billy woods might just kind of use the beat as a, a guideline to yeah. to get across a lot of thoughts um a kai solo even though he has like a similar cadence at times he he does also like rap over yeah, those beats yeah, yeah. yeah you know i um 
there there were a lot of there were a lot of differences and nuances between all those different rap styles but like you were saying in the chat about him sounding a lot like billy i think from an outsider perspective you know especially a person who's just kind of delving more into the underground scene it, it you'd be like oh, okay these are they're doing almost the same type of thing but i think those type of nuances are are easier to make than what what the um the layman might think it's okay, like wait can, you know, can, I, can i can i defend myself though oh Real i mean quick. i wasn't trying well, to I know, I know, but make accusations i know but i'm gonna say i can tell the subtle differences between billy and akai but the cadence and the structure flow is that of such they're just similar like akai tends to ride the beat a little bit more he's more like on like jet said he's more on yeah and can I just talk about this album real quick? Yeah, but yeah. Well, let's yeah, get right it. into it. Yeah, yeah. This album, Kai Solo. It wasn't bad, but for me, it just didn't hit me. Mm. And like, there's nothing bad I can point out about this album in particular. Mm. When I listened to the album, I was like, okay, this is a dude who can rap. These beats are actually good and fitting, and the album is good, but I just wasn't moved. And that's a me problem, guys. Like, this album is actually good. It's great. I just didn't. It didn't hit me. I'm not even saying I don't like it. It's not that I like it or I don't like it. I'm just right slap dead in the middle. I'll listen to this album like, ah, okay. Word. And maybe that's a me thing, but what did you guys did, think? Did his Body Feeling EP come out this year or last year? It came out this year. This year, earlier yeah. this year, right? So he put out an EP a few months ago, yeah. Body Feeling, which is shorter and a little more concise and less albumy. It's like a lot more kind of ambient and strange. Yeah. Uh, and I really, really like that EP. Like I think Body Feeling might make my top 10 if oh, okay. we're including EPs. Um, so Spirit Roaming, this album, while it's like a little more traditional, it's a little more straightforward, it, you know, lengthwise, it's well, half an hour long, 40 to 14 minutes, minutes um, something like that. Um, yeah, 42 minutes. And, and the topics he's dealing with are a little more concrete you know he he makes these kind of um there's certain imagery incidentally one of two kind of weeaboo albums we're going to review uh to, yeah like that's that's one of the things that makes me think that he's he's like younger because a, a lot of these younger cats are really like into anime and yes. it really comes across a lot in their music so, and yeah shit, i mean mob psycho 100 yeah, and uh, demon slayer, demon slayer both, track anime. titles yeah um, uh juvial grace, juvial grace is a character from that but Man, even, even Iron Galaxy, I wasn't sure if that was like a Cannibal Ox thing or if it's a game developer, because because oh. Iron Galaxy is a game developer as well, and they, I think they do like. I just games assumed. And shit. I don't have the. I don't actually have the math on that, but I just assumed because you know Iron Galaxy is like one of the the. It's a big. It's a big sure, Cannibal yeah, yeah. Ox track. You know also, what I mean. Also, coincidentally, uh, in the two two of the albums we're reviewing today, we have two songs about Musashi Miyamoto. Yeah, which is just cats are into that. You know that Five Rings um, wisdom. But what? but for me, dog, like I actually love this album a lot. There mm. are a few there are a few critiques that I have that I don't enjoy about the album. But like to me, like I like the variety of production on it. I like the variety good, of yes. flows and his different approaches. I like I like the cadences that he pulls through um you know the the production the he's got kind of a murderer's row of of a production giants on this album and um god i feel like um there's a few that i don't know but there's um you know there's there's fucking preservation is on this album messiah music um eblis who who he did like one of the first projects i've heard um is also on this album and and i really i really like it uh all like you know mob psycho that beat i love that beat he's super dope on that the juvial grace is really dope um what is the other one that i really like what's a win what's a win uh, yeah i i, I love up. those tracks one one of the things that i and it's also a critique that i have of the other album we're reviewing by uh, novelist is like i don't like the long um interludes of like this kind of uh, self-help or like this Hate kind it. of in it, like I want to listen to What's a Win. It's 45 seconds of a, like a YouTube clip. Mm -hmm. And then there's there's like multiple tracks like that, maybe three or four, as I say, multiple. But there's tracks like that that really kind of stop me from... They take me out of it, and I don't know if they kind of feel like they round out the theme of the album. And I I'm guess, not exactly guess, the, sure the, the, the theme is. There was one interlude I liked on that where it starts off with some very straightforward, like, oh, you know, if you just think about it, like, you'll get it. Like, you know, the secret type, like, positive yeah. thinking type thing. And then at the end, you have another voice coming in and saying, well, I don't know if my, I'm in, like, in the driver's seat like that. You yeah. know, I don't know if my brain is I in the driver's seat. I think that's for a few. 
Yeah, I think yeah. I think so. But um, but I mean, like what they're saying on those intros is perfectly fine with me. Like, oh, that's dope. That's that's a way to think about it. That's some self help shit, or that's like some esoteric type of approach to things. And, and mm. I feel good about it. I just think that it kind of pulls me out of the album a little bit. Like that's like if it was ten seconds, cool. Fifteen, cool. Thirty is pushing it. Fifty seconds is a um, long yeah. time for for an intro. When, when on I a first track. listened to What's a Win, I actually did just like skip forwards. I was like, "Is this a track or is this yeah. just an interlude?" Let well, me. And I, yeah. the, the thing about it is like a way to improve those might have been to have like a beat behind it or something to kind of add to it. But it really just feels like, "Oh, did my did did I switch to a YouTube video or some shit?" That's yeah. how it kind of hits for me. But it's a trope that's been yeah. leaned on too much recently in a lot of underground rap, in my opinion. That's the stuff I've been pointing out, and it's fun. Your critique right now is going to be my exact same critique on this novel. The novelist joint, because yeah. um, it's I, worse on that. It's, it's worse. So on that. much worse. Like comes, one, we'll, we'll talk about yeah, that yeah, when yeah, we get yeah, to. But it. this right here, this album, it, it was. Oh, it was. What? what, what okay, what? it was done like tastefully. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't done to the point of excess that I was just like taken out of it. But it was something that yeah kind of drew me out. But overall, like you said, the production is good. The lyrics are good. The I fucking love the lyrics, bro. Awesome. Like yeah, the tracks are fucking hard. Yeah, they're awesome. I can't they're fucking point dope. To anything bad on this album, but it's just not there. It's For like you. maybe if you would have threw a little ginger in there or some man, MSG. It would have made it pop. Shout out to MSG. Yeah, man, MSG yeah, is man. delicious. Oh, I, I forgot to mention uh, Rupper Williams is another cat that's a producer, and Ali are also on this shit, too. Mm. But, man, like, yo, it, for, for me, what I've been enjoying the most about this album is is the lyrics. Like, the production messing with the lyrics on this is really good. And, and a lot of times, Akai Solo will lean into a flow. Yeah. And and it's more like his spoken kind of talking flow. On this, I feel like he's actually like rapping, rapping on several of these tracks. Mob Psycho, Juvial Grace, um, Driftman. Like Driftman starts off slow, like he's just talking, and it's more like his typical style where it's very kind of Billy Woods-ish, Billy Wood-ish. where it's like the beat is a second thought, yeah. and then he goes in and starts fucking rapping, and it, and it's like it's very subtle, but. It, it catches you right on time and it's like okay he's going off he and also I- it's that grounding effect he has again like there are so many producers on here and, and the production even though all of it is of that kind of similar school of, of sampling and, and production like he just ties everything together so well you know his voice and his delivery like i think across the album obviously the the interludes kind of break things up a little bit for better or for worse but the um just generally like when akai solo starts rapping even if he's talking about different things thematically and lyrically, generally the whole thing just feels cohesive. It feels like an album to me. It doesn't feel like a collection of tracks by Word. six producers, you know? There's something he does on this album that I think is really good to kind of, um, that suits his style because um, for for his rap style, there's not a lot of joints where you just like, oh, oh, I'm going to rap along to it. But he used to do this thing where he would had his double vocal layer on parts that made you, that kind of like, made you want to say it and it was always off like it wasn't part of like where you think that you know what i mean like the end of a bar it'd be like in the middle of a bar or emphasis on a word and on this album one of the things he does on several tracks is like it's i was looking at the lyrics on um one of the rap genius or genius or whatever it is and like they got them sectioned off as choruses right like he'll start the song and it'll be like chorus verse chorus but what he's doing like to me it's almost like a poetic refrain where he pulls back this main because it's not a traditional chorus it's like eight bars you know what i mean hook yeah yeah it's not a hook it's so it's like eight bars and he pulls it back and it drives in emphasis on a certain thing that he's trying to express through the verse Mm -hmm. and then like at the second on the second course, he'll place different emphasis on certain words or he'll add a word and remove one or add like a yo or something. And it just makes these tracks almost anthemic to me where I just want to go back and listen to it. And he has so many bars to me that it's just like, I guess if you're a person that likes to hear and hear like, like, like a very clear, cogent and, and eloquent way of just saying something and like, oh man, I really feel like, you know, what Kit Cuddy said or or what like Big Crit said or some shit like that, right? With him, it's just like, it'll be lines that that just catch me. Like on Juvial Grace, we zoom in through a war zone fixed in the edge of a shift in place. Like Juvial Grace, arriving, being a thorn in your side while enduring one in my back. 
this for my people get their blood spilled still like that shit is so and like every time that comes on i'm right there with yeah. the chorus and he does that on so many of these tracks with these very kind of abstract impressionist multi kind of direction perspective bars that i i fucking love it like so many of these songs to me just are some of his best writing and me trying to kind of critique the way that he um writes his rhymes at times it feels like he writes the bar and then he'll think of some more words that rhyme and mm. put more words at the end so the the last word in in like a bar rhymes with like the middle of the next bar and he places an emphasis on it and then it runs on again to another sentence that connects with something else to to the layman that's not really interested in trying to figure out the scheme or what he's doing it sounds just like a guy who's free writing and just going off on some spontaneous prose just let me just say this with a rap style and it's it's rapping but there is a very in intricate approach that he has not on all the bars i'm not trying to say he's like doom in his craftsmanship but if you go if you were to take his bars and you look at one of those little um you know those those rap analysis videos yeah, that highlight, highlight all the fucking really words yeah, yeah. and it got everything highlighted, which is a little bit crazy because i don't think anybody writes rap like that it's kind of more of a natural reflex or impulse but if you look at his shit like that it it really is like interesting to me the way that he pulls that off like uh, this is not even an example but it's just a, a like a a, a a stanza that i put right it'd be brutal for fools watch me eat during the tutorial figured it would be cool if i tutored schools and it's like that full tutor cool tutored schools like he always really has this kind of really intricate zigzag style Rimsky, of writing yeah. his raps that i tremendously appreciate that was on a red butterfly right yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's that's one of my favorites on the album actually yeah. i think juvial grace is my my favorite track i like that shit. i didn't know who juvial grace was I mean, until like i googled it and i was like oh this is some anime shit i knew mob psycho because you know that's like on netflix and mm -hmm. shit like that like the title and, and I, I guess that might be dope. There's also a song called Musashi, you know what I mean? Which is, it, these cats, they love anime, but his shit is not like, like the, the Mob Psycho track and Juvial Grace and Demon Slayer are not like him doing a nerd rap, you know, Mega Ran, let me rap everything no. about mm -hmm. Thor's about hammer yeah. or some shit. It's like it being there, but he's really saying a lot of shit in here that's just like interesting, insightful, oddly philosophical oddly aspirational oddly inspirational i like the cat man i love this spade over here like word man now i'm glad you like it yeah and it's true <laughs> like i fucking really the man studied mathematics but he's still morose about the, the formula like i like that shit i'm fucking with this album i i really enjoy this album probably gonna hit in my top 10 what even though there's parts i don't like i don't like a few of these not gonna be in my top 10 but once again all right guys it's an album it's good like check, check it out if you got something to say jet because i would you recommend it yeah no, I was like, can i go off a little bit more uh, go, hold on no okay i mean like uh, all right some of the i want to give some credit to some of these other producers on here before we before we um leave too because i mentioned all those like well-known producers there's a full ca uh, a few cats on here that i wasn't aware of like argov who does the juvio grace beat uh 25th night I feel like I heard that name before, but I'm not. I, I don't. I don't know what project or who it was. Um, Wi-Fi God is really dope. Um, Pepper Adams is on this, and a cat named Juni. Juni is really dope too. And um, that what's a win joint? That what's a win joint is way more rappy than you would hear from Billy or even a Lucid. I think. If I could just rock it for a minute, right? Uh, he does this really dope assonance wordplay um, in alliteration even maybe with, with the P, like what P sound, but hold on. What's a win? See, but but look, you got to get through that's my word. a minute of this right? to get to it. And I think that's one of the reasons when I first heard it, I was like, it is free. I get what she's saying. Nobody create, you know, your sacred space. You create, it's your space. Blase, blase, but. That, that horn loop, very simple. It connects for me. Yeah, very simple, but it connects for me. Like, man, like, 
Got me sticky to it as a mouse missteps and has to reconcile the error wasting away on a sticky patch. Perhaps it should have been a pumpkin. Yeah, he's just Why ill, dog. I want to pull up the lyrics. Kind of bootleg Billy right here, though. Hell nah. I don't think so. Billy's never like is is kind of forward. I, I think like don't pop a blood vessel partner. I know your soul broke and your your brain broke. I, I I don't know. It's too low. I should have put it on a 404. But yeah, yeah, man. I, I I really like it. And I think that that's not fair to call him a bootleg Billy while we on it, actually. That's a compliment, though. Uh, but I, I don't think so. Uh, bootleg is never a compliment, dog. <laughs> it's like, don't pretend pretend it's a compliment <laughs> either. Don't, no, like, like, it's like people used to say, like, oh, um, Action Bronson is a bootleg hey, Ghostface. Ghostface. I think yeah. they're doing very different things. Yeah. It's similar, but they're very different. And I always thought that was an injustice to Action Bronson. And I'm a, one of the uh, ghosts uh, was on my top five favorite MCs for like 20 years. So, yeah, but but yeah, um, I, I won't go off any further so we can get through these other podcast review, uh, these podcast reviews, these it conversations works, about hip hop um, that we're going to be doing. But yeah, man, I highly, I highly enjoy this album. I would recommend this album to two fans of billy woods and them of course obviously and i would also i would also recommend this fan to i th i mean recommend this fan i would recommend this to younger listeners who aren't into abstract hip-hop like that okay but yeah. are kind of into like you know um cool shit that's on anime i was gonna mm. say i was gonna say more or less the same thing i was gonna say i recommend this album to people who Maybe they're really into like uh, Lupe Fiasco or you know like a that's what I was gonna like say. Dope MCs who are like a little outside of that abstract space and haven't been able to gel with you know your Billy Woodses or, or your. Yeah. Um, this you know, is like a more. good stepping stone to get into Billy Woods and shit. In the same way that like an Earl is kind of a stepping stone to get into the more Billy Woods weirder weirder shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I rock with that. I'm going to recommend this to people who like Billy Woods and the Lucid and Lupe Fiasco. Um, I personally don't have anything bad to say about this album, but I don't have anything good to say either. But check it out. You be the judge. Oh, and if you like weird ambient shit, listen to Body Feeling. That album's incredible. Right. I, I really, really like that EP. Uh, I, His old catalog is really good, man. Yeah. Like Hajime is also really good. Hajime is really good, oh. yeah. My drift cannot be caught. Yo, he, what is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, anyways. Secret, Secret House, House against reviews. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Fuck the whole right. Yeah. Figure it out. You know the vibes. <laughs>